now. All right. Let's see. All right. Let me know when you start. Something's happening. All right, we're live. Let me just double check. Hey guys, uh, tell me a little about yourself, where you coming from. If you are on right now, I'm trying to get in the group and see whatever questions you guys, you guys post. Uh, give me a second, I gotta find it. All right, whatever. I can't see it, but we're gonna do it. Uh, yeah, well, let's assume it. I see the little in the just corner. Let's assume people are in there. Uh, I'm just gonna have uh, my assistant kind of keep an eye on it. Okay. I can't see if we're on or not, but it says we're on. So, anyways, uh, hey guys. How you doing? This is Jonathan from Off Market Ninja, and do I have a treat for you? I'm excited to talk to my buddy uh, Adrian Smooth out of Florida. Uh, he's a landlord, he's an investor, and you wholesale a little bit too, right, uh, Adrian? Yeah, we wholesale what we don't want. Got, gotcha. And he a better, uh, most importantly, he is a mobile home expert. All right. So help me welcome Adrian Smooth, ladies and gentlemen. So, so what's up, man? Tell me what you've been up to. Thank you, man. Well, it's been a while since you were down here in the uh, Tampa area. So I'm in yeah. between Tampa and Orlando, but we see each other all the time at the meetings. And yeah. we have fully shifted our business over to mobile homes over the last few years. Cool. And it's just treated us well. We just listen to the market and we are comfortable with the, the risk that comes with mobile homes we have those hurricanes down here and it comes with you know a little more risk they, they become hurricane missiles some people say <laughs> well, business is good that's business good this is great that's great that's good and uh all right so um i love i love that you have you have abm all right well, I, it's not a medical condition you always be marketing, man. You always yep. be marketing, you know. I, I, was a Grant, Grant Cardone says omnipresence. <laughs> exactly. One, one of, I don't agree with all his views of never resting, but right. that's one I took and it, and it helped. I don't see you without a shirt. Like either where you are with uh, your horseback riding, you're riding your bike, you're doing whatever. You, you're on a date with your wife. You, you, you have that shirt on. And, you know, you put a blazer on. Of course, you have a blazer oh, on. <laughs> But you just like you just wearing that shirt. That's cool, man. I like that. I it's like that, it's so. funny. She gets a little tired of me wearing it. <laughs> so I recently made a belt buckle that oh, says no. my wife buys so that whenever we go somewhere and she wants me to dress up nicer, I'm like, well, I'll just tuck my shirt in and I'll have a belt buckle. So at least something's still there. <laughs> That's cool. That's cool. It's compromise. It's it's marriage lessons. People don't realize they're gonna get here. You're compromising. I like it. I like it. All right, cool, man. And um all right, so, and you know, I, I, I envision your your closet like you know, like Batman, you know, like a bunch of shirts lined up, <laughs> a bunch yeah. of green shirts lined up, and then maybe some jeans in the bottom. That's that's kind of cool. <laughs> All right, man. Lots, so, of, lots of shorts. I'm in lots Florida. Of shorts, right? Lots of shorts. You, you're in Florida. You need shorts. All right, so tell us uh, a little bit about yourself. How you get into it? Uh, real estate. I'm sorry. How do you get into real estate? What what happened there? Well, tell me a story. Okay. So December was 17 years ago. I was 20 years old, bought a house because I was being evicted. My friends and I were terrible, terrible land or terrible tenants, not landlords. We were the tenants. I, I understand now what a bad tenant <laughs> looks like. I mean, we have eviction letters stating, uh, please don't park your motorcycle inside. We had pool parties inside the house. We were, I, I don't know why we didn't get evicted earlier, but anyways, oh, uh, uh, long story short there, that was back when you needed a signature, if that, to buy a house. I bought a house with a $1,500 check. All the clothing costs, everything was wrapped in the mortgage. 
and I moved those same friends into the house. The same friends that helped and, you get evicted. Yep. You moved them. <laughs> yep. Okay. And and luckily that turned out pretty well. We were still all friends, and uh, we didn't totally destroy my house, but I understood from the landlord side at that point why we sucked. Okay. So then I continued renting that house out by the room, and we are actually just moved the people out that were in there uh, a few weeks ago, and we are going to be selling that property now. But That's over the years, we had bought a few uh, other site-built homes, uh-huh. and we did that with some bank financing. And then numbers oh, – sorry, let me back up. The second house I bought was at the top of the last market. And I bought it with an arm. I bought it losing a tiny bit of money every month, but it's okay. You'll refinance in two <laughs> years. Appreciation is going straight up. Why well, right. time the market perfect and bought at the top? So I was cool. one of the guys they wrote about in the in the paper. I ended <laughs> up giving it back to the bank as a. Uh, well, I know, sorry, we did a short sale with that. Yeah. And that was awesome for me, not at the time, <laughs> but because it made me very conservative. And gotcha. I got scared to let that happen again. Gotcha. So you know, after that one. And, and the, let me think five years ago, I want to say now, four or five years ago, I thought stuff was too expensive. It was too inflated. I'm like, I, I can't do this because I remember last time, but I still wanted to be in real estate. And we had, I think we had two or three, I think we had three properties at that time, rentals. And okay. as we know, we've gone straight up still since four or five years ago. Well, I yeah. started listening to the guys and uh, I call them the, the gray hair, bald guys in the back of the rooms at like RIA <laughs> meetings and stuff. They've been doing it longer than I've been alive. Yeah. Well, they all mentioned mobile homes that they either owned them at the time or they have owned them in the past. I just decided, look, these guys know more about real estate than I do. So then I bought my first one. And it just snowballed from there. We just continued buying mobile homes. I look at mobile homes as cash flow. Uh, you can build some equity and whatnot. I mean, you could get the stand in front of this beautiful thing instead <laughs> of a nice, shiny quarter million, half million dollar house. Okay. But some people's ego won't allow them to do that. I, I'm, and, I'm afraid to say I'm one of those people that, you know, <laughs> sees it as like, oh, let's call Adrian. <laughs> And, and exactly, that is how we get a lot of our leads. I'm sure we'll talk about that, but yeah. that is really good for me. Yeah. And um, so what do we do? So what do we do? We started selling every year one of our site-built homes. We started doing the numbers, the math. I, and I, we bought these to never sell. I was like, I'm buying this. The numbers work. I'm going to hold it forever. And we had four and a quarter financing you know, the, the great wow. financing, we're not bank financeable anymore. So like, we didn't want to lose that low interest rate. But then we started realizing how much equity we had and what we could do with that equity. And it just became a no brainer to sell yeah. and trade into mobile homes. People would mostly think that you would want to trade up, but we're trading into cash flow. So we're gotcha. down to our last site built home and we're all mobile homes. Gotcha. That's, so, that's my real quick story. <laughs> so about four, five years ago, when I was starting, you were like making that shift because I remember mm-hmm. me and you kind of came into, into yep. like and the that, real meetings around were, the same time. Yeah, exactly. That's when I started really going to meetings. That's when I found the the real side right. of real estate investing, not what the banks tell me. And <laughs> I, I mean, I, it was a shocker to me. I just believed whatever the banks told me for a long gotcha. time. Gotcha. Yeah. So that's how you landed on mobile homes from like mm-hmm. listening to the old guys and like four years ago. Um, I was trying to get into wholesaling. Uh, and actually me and uh, me and a group I was working with and you did some deals together uh, yep. for a little bit. And uh, and but then you landed you went you went you went deep on mobile homes and, you know, you're the mobile home guy now. So that's cool, man. All yeah. right. Cool. And um, so. Okay, so in our group, it's it's for newer people, right? So the we got the the people that have either done a deal and are or they, they they are like, okay, so how do I get another deal? 
or the people that just started haven't done any deals or the people that are still in that analysis paralysis stage. So okay. what you do, what you do, it's, you know, it's, it's awesome. I understand it. I've been in, in the business for a while. So layman's terms, just how, how, what is it that you do with mobile homes? Like, you know, so let's break down mobile homes because people all, everyone has a different view of mobile homes. A lot of people just think of them in the parks. Right. So in my opinion, there's three different ways to invest in mobile homes. One, you buy just the home and you pay lot rent every single month. So you're buying a home and you're paying to have it in someone else's land. We've done a few of those. Uh, I, they were excellent for our growth. We might do some more, but I like to call myself lazy. And those, from my experience, have been a little bit more maintenance and maintenance is in the tenants because we bought them in lower end parks. Uh, they, again, they were fantastic ways to grow. Uh, if someone's looking to go that way, I would recommend Deals on Wheels by Lonnie Scruggs. Fantastic book. He was the king of that. Unfortunately, he's passed away. But so there, and those can be very low dollar. Uh, we'll say one of them we bought for $2,300. We did very little work to it. And then we sold it on payments for six or $7,000. Uh, we had to turn that over. I think we're on our fifth or sixth person by now. And I truly do not want this property anymore because we have started to fortunate upgrade. Uh, all right. So then our second type of property is what we mainly do. It's our main business. We buy the mobile home and we buy the land. So now you're buying real, real estate. So those These are, are normal houses outside of the park is what you're saying. Yep. Yep. Okay. Uh, outside of the park, you're buying the dirt. That's what we really buy is the dirt. We go to a normal title company, just like a site built home. They do the closing. And our niche has moved to some of the older ones. Uh, I know we'll talk about financing in a little bit, but more of the ones that are very difficult to get financed. That's been our niche. So we're buying dirt that happens to rent out with a home on it. And the third one, which we have not done yet and not sure that we want to, we're looking for a fantastic deal. Is mobile home parks. So you're owning the entire park, the all the land, and you're either renting just the parking spot and someone has their own mobile home there, or you're renting the whole home. There's, those okay. are the two ways. Think of it as a flat apartment complex. And there's lots of those out there. They can be very, very profitable. One of my things is there's a lot of government red tape and you have to register all these things. And I just rather deal with a single person that wants to live there and stay there the rest of their life. Um, they're not as, they have a very stigma for being very trashy mm -hmm. and we don't buy yeah. those. I mean, we've, like I said, we, we have one or two in the lower end park, but we buy something that someone wants to live there. Not that they have to live there. That is a type of property. We buy in an area that I have no problem sending my wife to drive by on her own. I don't buy anywhere that she, I would not feel safe sending her. And we're in a pretty rural area. So it works very well. We look for blue collar workers. They want the land, a quarter acre, maybe even an acre to live on. And they don't, they care about that more than they care about the home, we'll say, because they want to bring their their sheep or their, not sheep, but their uh, goats and their pigs and their, and all their different things, chickens. They want to lay, you know, they want all of that. And okay. that's, that's a lot of our tenants. So, you, so that's the I quick mean, basics of it all. It makes sense. So let me, let me, <laughs> let me say, uh, Adrian is not in a, in a, in a city, right? He's in Polk County, yep. Florida, which is, you know, it's right outside of uh, of Tampa, uh, about what forty five minutes from Tampa. Uh, yeah, yeah. You say about there. Yeah, so it's almost in the middle of Tampa and Orlando. Yeah, so he's it's in a rural area, and uh, you know, mobile homes are usually going to be in rural areas. Uh, I'm in Georgia. I used to live in Tampa. I'm in Georgia now. But in order to find mobile homes, mobile homes look kind of weird to me now because they kind of. Uh, the government's trying to get rid of them in this area where I'm at, northern Georgia. 
Uh, but in southern Georgia, if you drive through them, it's all mobile homes. And that's what you're going to run into. So, you know. That's a great point. And so a lot of bigger municipalities don't want them. Yeah. And part of that reason is they can get better tax dollars on a bigger, taller building. Oh, that's what it is. Okay. That's that's one of the reasons. And, you know, there is a bad stigma around them. And I, I know people that have changed that stigma. But, yeah, you, you're correct. And you want that's one thing you really want to check out when you're buying one is if this gets destroyed, a mm -hmm. fire, you know, hurricane, something like that, can I even replace it? Right. Because there's a lot of areas you're grandfathered in, and if it gets destroyed, now you just own dirt. So you own dirt, and your only, your only um, alternative at that point will be to build a site home? Yeah. You know, so there's some municipalities that that's what they say, is you cannot replace it. Gotcha. Or you so, have to replace it with like kind. And I don't want to find out what the government's definition of like kind is. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. All right. All right. So um, keep in mind that people here on this call, uh, mm -hmm. again, I can't see anybody, but on this call are from all over the country, right? So anything, that, any regulations that will be countrywide that you need to be aware of, like mortgage, mortgage uh uh, regulations and um, you know anything that you can think of um so nationwide i don't know i don't yeah. even know tampa i stick to a very strict <laughs> yeah. 30 minutes from my house gotcha. i'll say some it, it, let's go into the financing because this is i'm pretty sure pretty uh straight across the board through the u.s if you go to a big bank, you're not getting a loan unless it's within 20 years, it's a double wide. They want basically a brand new home. That's what they want a loan on. So okay. I'm talking about uh, Bank of America, Chase, all the big boys. Okay. If you go to a credit union, a small regional bank, you know, they got two, three, four, five branches, they will talk to you. And I've heard of them saying, yes, we can go back to 1976 but everything has to be brought up to current code. Okay. And I'll tell you, if it's older than 1980, you're probably going to spend too much money to get up to the current code. Because uh, gotcha. in 1978, there was a, a change in the quality. The government actually said, you actually have to build these with quality now. Because before that, it was, you do whatever oh, yeah. you want. Yeah. And I seen, so, I seen, I seen some, so... <laughs> Uh, so they become very hard to finance the older ones. Uh, and every one thing you want to look at is what is your municipality's uh, ruling on the straps and tie downs. That's what actually anchors it to the ground. Yeah. There's little like piers and then physically a metal strap. In Florida, I believe it was 98 that they put in that you have to have uh, a new code because of the Hurricane Andrew that went through Miami. So now they're closer. So gotcha. if someone had one installed prior to that, they have to spend 2,500 to three grand to have them up to the new code. And a gotcha. lot of people don't want to spend that. Gotcha. Gotcha. So bringing it back uh, to, you know, most of our listeners are going to be wholesalers. So uh, there's two types, like you said, right? There's your site uh, or the, the one that has actual real estate. Right. Mm -hmm. So the one, the mobile home with the land. Right. Yep. So that's the one that you deal with. And then there's the other one that's in a park that pays lot rent, which mm -hmm. as I understand it, that thing is basically a vehicle. Yep. Right. Exactly. Because it has. I'm, yeah. We, right. we when we buy them, I meet the person at the DMV. That's how I do it. Right. Uh, I do know I have a friend in Wisconsin that just said. The government, they are just changed it where the DMV is no longer in charge of the mobile homes. I don't remember what department he said it took over, but it's brand new this year. So right. I would check of who governs them. But in Florida, it's the DMV. And as you said, it's it's, it's a car. Like a vehicle. I yeah. mean, you get, a, you get a title, just like a car. Right. <laughs> and registration, you, you have stickers in the window too, like just like a car. Yep. In gotcha. Florida, we have to renew it on December 31st versus your birth date. Okay, cool. So that brings me to my next question, right? So when when we would get a call, I've you know, 
don't have those calls anymore because in Georgia. But when we get a call and, uh, you know, you get excited as a call from your sign. Oh, you know, we buy houses and uh, somebody would, would, uh, would tell us, hey, you know, I have this house. Everybody thinks that either lot or land is real estate. They, they call it real estate. Hey, we have this mm -hmm. house. And then you you go and pull up the house and uh, or pull up your phone. And uh, you see it's a, it's a mobile home, and you're like, oh, crap, a mobile home. So we had no idea what to do with them, right? So how do how do I even start as a wholesaler? What what do I even do? How, much, how do I figure out this, how this thing is worth? How do I wholesale these things? It's a very difficult answer to uh, question to answer. And I get this question a bunch of a answer, uh, questions in there. Let's start with, uh, so, yeah, go ahead. How do, we, how do we value it? Yeah. It's... These old ones, I have found to be very difficult to value because let's say we can find comps. And I'd say half the time I can't find any real comps. If so we can find comps, comps, we're going to comp with other mobile homes. Yes. Okay. So if I can find, let's say that I get a call on a 1975 and I start searching. Normally, people are taught to look within a few years of, of that, you know, what 20 percent of the square foot All right i've had appraisers tell me that they don't care about the year so much they'll go 20 years out on a mobile uh, i i don't know how true that is but i've had a few appraisers tell me that but let's just say there there are five comps and some of them for a 1975 they might be sixty thousand dollars and then you might have some at seventeen thousand dollars and they're all over the board. In my opinion, from what I've seen over and over and over again, the $17,000, that's the wholesaler. That's the investor. So that's what they're buying it at. And most people think, oh, the $60,000, that is the ARV. That's the finished product. Okay. Well, because you can't get bank financing, that's not so true. That is usually an investor that is selling the property with owner financing. And those investors usually sell it at an inflated price. So that real retail value might be 50,000. It might be 55,000. If it's a greedy investor, it might be 40,000. But the person's willing to pay 60 because they're getting finance where they couldn't get finance in a normal bank. And this is why it's very hard to get a a real comp because you might send it over to me and just say, look, man, it's 60,000. I have three comps right around the area. They're the same. That's your ARV. No, that's only my ARV. If I am willing to own or finance it and deal with Dodd-Frank. Right. That's right. why it's pretty difficult to get it. Now, what, what do we do? Because we are buying for ourselves for cash flow. So I look at it as my ROI. I want my return. That's one of the ways I look at it. And in my opinion, we'll never look at anything under 20%. Because I mentioned about hurricane missiles. They start flying around and they get destroyed. And people think, oh, you just move a new one on there. Florida is pretty expensive to move them. I've heard a lot of other states are cheaper. Florida, it's about five grand to move a single wide and 10 grand to do a double wide. And that's most of your setup. If it's an older home, Florida is pretty flat. And that means our water table is pretty close. So a lot of times you have to upgrade the septic. You could be 12 grand there. You didn't have to do it if the home's already there. But if you have to re replace it, now they say you have to bring it up to code. So you could be looking at a new septic. Uh, you could have your septic and well too close because codes have changed. So now you may have to move your septic or move your well. Like I already mentioned the moving costs. There may be trees that you have to all take down. You may have to ask a neighbor, hey, can I come through your property? And you, that's all of that for a used mobile that you may have to pay for and do repairs on. So they can get pretty expensive. Uh, I went on a little tangent there, but that's why I believe it's very irresponsible to buy them under 20% ROI, because at some point you're going to get caught. I mentioned how I'm, I'm conservative. We don't, I think that we've bought maybe one or two ever that produce that low. And it's because I loved the land. And I think the land is going to be sold to a developer one day. So how else do I get a value? Uh, well, you mentioned I'm in Polk County. That is Lakeland. That is one of the counties I deal in. I deal in three counties. Polk County is like most counties where the property appraiser land value 
is arguably lower than what the real land value is. Most people will agree it's low. So my goal is to buy it at what the property appraiser land value is. So that ensures to me, I have a good price. And when we use private money, that ensures to that person, and I can show them all this and they feel comfortable lending on something that is pretty well under the market value from their guesstimation as well. So I do that. Uh, I actually look at Zillow a little bit. Uh, most people hate it. Um, but if Zillow says it's worth 60,000 and I do plan to own or finance it, you know, again, you have to deal with Dodd-Frank and all that. But if I plan to do that and it says 60,000 and I feel like I can actually make money by selling at that price, I look at Zillow because the end buyer is looking at Zillow. Looking because, at Zillow yeah. right. So if it said 40,000, they're going to think I'm ripping them off selling it at 60. Right. If I think I need to be able to sell it at 60 and it says 100,000, now I either can go a little higher possibly, or I look like a great guy because I'm selling it at a cheaper price. So I kind of back out my numbers. I start with the end in mind. What am I going to do with it? And I keep backing down the numbers. If it's an older home, and I, I consider older than 1980 an older home, materials were not good to be nice. You ha most likely have aluminum wiring. The, the plumbing can be bad. There's a lot of things, and they are cheaper to work on. But I have, I'm, gonna have, I'm going to have a lot more maintenance repairs okay. on those older ones. So then I have to you know, bring that up a little bit. Gotcha. I'm not sure if I answered all the questions. I went. No, you did. On, <laughs> well, on I mean, to, basically, I didn't fully answer it. I answered it in my way. <laughs> what I'm getting from here is what I'm getting from you is that if I'm looking to wholesale this thing, I can pull up an ARV just like I would pull with a regular single family home. I just have to use an ARV that's a mobile home. I'm sorry, that comp that's an, a mobile home nearby. Yeah. And around and the same age. Right. And it, it, yeah, you can go further out on age. And yeah. I mean, really, what I, I did at first uh, with not even mobile home, just learning how to wholesale, I just contacted honest buyers, you right. know, and you just learn that maybe the hard way or just by going to meetings. And you just send it to them and say, hey, what could you pay for this? Or, you know, hey, I think this is the right price. What do you think? And then that person I always gave the first shot to. Uh, so, I mean, in your market, if you could find a real buyer for mobile homes, you know, I'd send people send them to me sometimes and I tell them, look, I'll be right around mid 20s without just seeing pictures and looking it up online. And I don't care if they get it under contract for 15 or 10. I, my, my price is my price. Right. You know, your job is to make money in the, in the middle. You don't, you don't care what other people make. You just make care of that. We just bought one and the guy uh, had $10,000 on it. And yeah, I'm great. glad he made money. So he'll, he'll bring me another one. <laughs> right. right. That's, that's how everything works. As long as, you know, you're making money, who cares how much the other person is making? Yeah. All right. We have some questions actually from the audience. Which cool. Is great. Uh, I can't see it, but I have Yvette. Thanks, Yvette, for helping me out. Uh, so uh, we actually got a few that came in. I'm going to handle those first uh came in through out the week um let me see this is uh from u.s home buyers uh where are we at okay u.s home buyers she's saying we have a possible 1972 not sure how to value evaluate this one or contract it thoughts so yeah we pretty much went over that uh, again something i did not mention if it is the home and the land so you're buying it real real estate Make sure you put in the personal property where you would normally put in a refrigerator, range, anything like that. Technically, you got to put in the mobile home. And I learned this the hard way, and luckily it wasn't a really hard way, but on my first time I was wholesaling one, I didn't put that in there. And at closing, they said technically the seller could have moved the home off and they had the legal right to do that. Right. This was an old one like that, and it was not going to be moved. It was not in the condition to be able to do that. But it's good practice to always put in there. Uh, ask them for the VIN, the VIN, write that in there, or you 
they don't have that right then, you know, 1973 white single wide, and it's also included. So I would put that in there. If it is just the home, and we have wholesaled some of those, you would treat it just like a car, like you said. So you could write up an agreement between the two of you. But I don't know of any way to stop someone from going around you because there's you can't go lean it or anything like that. Um, but most people, I believe, are honest. They made a commitment to you. They're going to go through with it. And and that's how we we, host, we actually more bird dog those that need to be moved. Mm-hmm. Uh, we got a guy we work with and it's great. If you, this is where partnerships and working with your team and meeting people like in the group here is so valuable because I don't want to deal with those, but I don't want to lose that sale or that, that little bit of money I can make. And I want to help the person. Right. So I can forward them on to him and a check shows up in my mailbox. And that's a great point. Cause uh, I get questions all the time about people like, you know, uh, they are either looking to bear dog or they they they're like okay so do we need to have all this on the contract do i have to have a lawyer look it over and really when you're wholesaling it's all about relationships like uh i rarely put anything on a contract because you know like if i were to wholesale with you i would i wouldn't put anything on me me and you have a relationship that you know screw me over i'll i'll mess up your your reputation (laughs) it's really all i love that that's 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 exactly what i usually say i mean yeah I mean, and, and, it, and I would rather learn that the hard way yeah. with something like that and lose out on potential money than actually getting in a few hundred thousand dollar deal with you and then learn that you're a jerk. Right, right. And then I have that real money on the line. And so, I mean, you have it too. It's the abundance mentality. There's right. a few bad people and they just move around and you just, you sniff them out by, it's, by talking to them that, more than once. It's just that they are bad is because you hear from them. I mean, you heard about it, like, you know, bad yeah. news in, in the news. You only hear bad yep. news in the news. Uh, but really, I mean, especially if, if it's your first wholesale deal, don't worry too much about, you know, <laughs> your contract or lawyers or having to look it over because that's going to cost you $10,000 more than you can make in a deal. I just say, you know, have a have a handshake relationship with somebody, you know. Um, I I, I'm gonna. You, you're got me thinking. I'm gonna, I need to go back and look to see how many handshake deals I've done versus right. contracts. Right. I know last year for sure we did more handshake deals wholesaling than we did written contracts. Right. I know that for sure on last year. Because uh, I'm, I'm glad you brought that up. Because it's it's everybody's so worried about getting ripped off. And yes, I've gotten ripped off. I mean, I'm sure you probably have. And I've heard a bunch of people who have. But it's just a learning uh, experience. Yeah. So, yeah, I agree. You know, so anyway, so we have another uh, question. Uh, well, we, we do not go on time. Uh, well, actually, you think you answered it in the group, but just answer it uh, just so everybody can, uh, can benefit from it. So if, and this is from uh, Pedro Garcia. Um, he said, oh, it's the right person? Oh, yeah, I'm sorry, no. This is from uh, Raju Charlotte. I'm sorry about that. Uh, if we rehab the mobile home, will the first time home buyers able to purchase with conventional mortgage? Yeah, so I'll touch on that a little bit more is because this is always the a big topic people want to know about. Yeah. You, the best thing is to go and talk to banks, tons and tons of banks, and just get their re- criteria. Again, skip the big boys and go to your smaller ones and just ask them what the real criteria is around here and i believe this is the same everywhere you can the home can never have been moved now i have heard a decent amount of people more recently saying that the va is lending on ones that have been moved or so and so is Uh, i have not talked to the actual lender or seen it happen but that rumor is starting to be out there and then that guy that did reply there to it he was a lender yeah Uh, his you know his terms and stuff looked pretty decent. That's when I've talked to uh, private Garcia, mortgage, guys. private mortgage uh, people. That's about the terms I've heard. Um, I would say definitely talk to him. Make sure you know I don't know him, so make sure he's a legit guy, and then ask him the real terms because some people have told me they do all that, and then I say, okay, I got a 1975 single wide, and it's going to be twenty five thousand dollars, and then all of a sudden they're like, oh no, I don't want that. 
So make sure you specify what they really will do year. And then if it's homeowner or if it is a investor, because some of them will only do homeowners. Some of them are only going to do investors. But in my opinion, the best way to do it is if you're buying it for your money to get your money in it is private money, a little bit of your own money in it, and then owner financing. And okay. by the end buyer, there's no, no, in no in conventional financing is going to do this one back here. <laughs> not, not at all. <laughs> and, and that's why the price goes down. Right. There's not as much money for it. So now that's where we step in. We fill that void of the market. So something like that, there will be, um, I mean, that, that one that's behind you, that would have, would have had land. I mean, yes. that's one of yours, right? Yep. We oh. go out this a thousand dollars down a hundred dollars a month. Okay. That's the rent. That's not, Okay. That's no, that's what we bought it. That's the owner. That's what you bought it. Out. Okay. You bought it yeah. on terms. Okay. Yep. About a quarter acre of land and, and it's beautiful. So if you even wanted to, you can just, you know, for you guys uh, looking to get a new home, you can use the same thing. Uh, if you find a, a shitty mobile home like this and you just want the land, you can do the same thing and just build your own home on it. Uh, if yeah. you wanted to, can you do that? It, yeah. And so you, of course you have to look at zoning. Um, Okay. One of the things on that is you can, it holds impact fees. Now I know this is going to be different around the country and well, even around it here, the different municipalities, they all have a different amount of time that if it's vacant, then they raise impact fees or they come back in, in the effect. So something like this that does not look livable, it's condemned or whatever. It is holding the fact that there are no impact fees anymore. So there is value there. And just to have this hauled off to the dump around us is about three grand. Uh, now I would have liability insurance if you have this sitting there, from yeah. some kids go and play in it. But yeah, we, we've wholesaled some or even bought and sold them to end buyers that are going to put a brand new home on it. That's another little strategy you can do with them is you buy this little one, you, you have a relationship with a retail commission guy that works at one of the mobile home sales places and say, hey, I got this land, it already has impact fees because it already has a property on it or a home on it. Do you have any buyers for it? And those guys, we have a great relationship with one guy and we email on properties all the time. Cool. cool. Just making relationships, guys. I mean, exactly. That's, that's all, that's what it's all about. You know, uh, I'm not saying not to be careful, but I think people worry too much about, you know, contracts and, you know, do I have to buy my lawyer in this and, you know, it's just that, that for, to me, that stops you from making deals and, you know, because. Yeah. And, and most people, when they start out, they don't have anything. So right. we're worried about, <laughs> we're worried about people suing us to take nothing. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> you know, so, at some point, I mean, I, I mean, you definitely want to get things tightened up, but we, we went years yeah. without things being right. Right. I mean, <laughs> people think I'm crazy. I I, I opened my first LLC, I think, after you moved up north. Yeah. I didn't have an LLC for years doing yeah, all this. Yeah, you just wholesale them to your own uh, yeah. name. Yeah. yeah. Or, we bought them in our own name. We bought them in our own name, yeah. <laughs> we did everything, yeah. everything in and our own name. And then you, can, you like, can do a, a, a quick claim to your to your LLC mm -hmm. if you want to after. So, yeah. you know, that's, that's what I always say. Jump and build your wings on the way down. Just, just, just do it. You know, and, you'll uh, learn a lot faster that way will. than, than sitting I mean, behind a computer. Exactly, exactly. I mean, I've, I've maybe heard of a handful of stories uh, that somebody did something. And uh, one example that comes to mind is um, a friend of mine had this house. And uh, I can't mention the person's name, but he had this house on the contract. And uh, he had some end buyers going through. And the end buyer actually started rehabbing the house without actually closing on the house. <laughs> so you probably heard that story. But, you know, other than that, stuff like that, that rarely happens, you know. Mm -hmm. And if it does happen, you know, then then you deal with it and then you learn from yeah. it, which is great. Anyway, so you have uh, two questions from Thales. I'm sorry if I messed up your name. Thales Ophile. All right. Um, um, again, thanks, Yvette, for sending me these. Uh, I can't see anything. Anyway, so first question, you are buying single family homes, so small pieces of land in the 
country where there are no codes, more or less, right? Basically. I mean, I would not say there's no codes. I would say that code enforcement does not drive by as often. <laughs> um, but in typically, the code is more lax in a county versus in the city. You know, that's what I have found. Uh, so yes, our niche, and we did not, that's a good point on, on the overanalyzing before you start. Yeah. I would have never picked this niche ever. Even when I first started mobile home, right. I still wouldn't say the actual niche we have now is what I would have been doing. I just slowly listened to what the market was giving us, what was working, what was making us the most money. And we have continued to move that way. As I mentioned, we've are, we're selling our last site built home. Do I think we'll go back to site built homes? Yes, we will. I know we will. Is it in the next year? Probably not because the prices aren't going to come down enough. Once the market adjusts, then we'll shift over to site build again. The same thing with the mobile homes. I would love to have maybe something a little bit prettier than this, a bigger lot, uh, maybe in the city limits. I don't have a problem with any of that. It just depends on what the market's giving me at that time. Gotcha. It all, all depends on the market and the market's kind of crazy right now too. Mm -hmm. It's a, it's a, it's not a buying market right now, but <laughs> you know, uh, you just got to look at the market in your area and uh, what you're buying. So anyway, great so market to wholesale in. Yeah, exactly. It's, it, it is, it is. So, uh, all right. So another question, same person, um, you ain't, you own everything and do rent to own. What ROI are you getting on, on average? We do some rentals. We do some rent to own. It depends on the property itself. Uh, one of the ways we make that decision, is it going to be like this one that's going to have a high maintenance because it's an older home? In those cases, we will usually do some type of rent to own. Uh, another thing that restricts us is we can only do so many to stay compliant with Dodd-Frank and to keep our accountant happy. So we have to watch that. Uh, we do have one that's just a rental and the guy's been fantastic. He's been there for a while and he said, hey, I'd love to buy this. Would you consider selling it? He's a good guy. There's no reason we would need to do it, but we want to keep a, the guy happy. He's, he's good. Why not give him a deal? So we're talking to him now about, you know, well, how much would you offer on it? And, and we'll consider um, owner financing that one to him. And what was the last part of the question? Um, sorry, let me go back here. Uh, what ROI are you getting on average? I have never ran those numbers, but I will tell, say with home and land, my guess is it's an upper 20%, maybe even 30. Um, if it's in the park, uh, I would never even consider it under 50% ROI. Some of the people I follow say if it's not 110%, they would never do it. Uh, we have not gotten 110% on one in the park yet. I think we've probably averaged 50 to 75%. But you got to remember on those, that's a huge percentage. That might be $125 a month coming into your actual checking account. And if you have a $400 lot rent and you're vacant for two months, you may have wiped out the whole year of profits. Or you, know, or you have a bigger expense. So the percentages move a lot faster on those smaller deals. Uh, but it, and me personally, I wouldn't do anything under 20% in Florida. I can't say that would be the same in the rest of the country because if uh, you have no hurricanes, you know, I don't know how these are really affected with snow, but I know that snow and ice, you can do them because they've had trailers in Alaska for yeah. longer than I've been alive. So it, it's possible. I just don't know those markets. A lot of it's your personal preference. If you say I'm going to do nothing under 15%, that's what you will do. I say I would never do anything under 20% and I just won't buy anything like that. It, you. It's what you, your standard that you set for yourself. Gotcha. All right, guys, that's the, all the questions that I have from the, from the, from the viewers. Uh, just go ahead and put your questions. I'm, uh, we got a few minutes left here with, uh, with Adrian. Uh, but I do have one question for you that I prepared for before. Uh, I was, I was uh, curious about how do you calculate repairs of these things? Is it like a, <laughs> yeah, please enlighten me. So 
this is one of the reasons I, so I've never done a fix and flip. I'm, I take that back. I've done one accidental fix and flip, meaning I <laughs> planned it to be a rental. I got greedy. It was in a good area. Sorry, a bad area, not a good area. Yeah. And uh, long story short, I could not find anyone of my caliber to move in it. And we sold it in less than a month. So that was technically a fix and flip because we did some work to it. Right. I don't know how to do fix and flips. This is also another reason I've never been amazing at wholesaling. I am not good at estimating repairs. <laughs> and I, I do it because you have to do it. And I, I had just to. learned, I learned this a uh, year and a half ago when we bought eight uh, mobiles that year. And that's a big year for us. You know, everyone has their own different pace, but a big year for us is, is buying eight. And I went over budget on every one of them. So what I do is I do my budget. I add a little bit. That's exactly what we're taught to do. And then I know that that is going to be wrong. So I need to get the, the price even lower. So let's say I shoot for a 30% ROI and I'm wrong on my budget and I get a 23%. Oh, well, it's still good. Still fantastic return. Uh, so I, I know it's not the right answer and it's not what I would advise anyone to do, but that is what I have learned to do. Um, Around here, we have a lot of mobile home parts stores, a lot of them. Yeah. So you start going to those and finding out the prices. Uh, Lowe's and Home Depot even sell parts to them. And I know we're going to get a question, so I'll get ahead of it. Like, what do you mean? Why are they different? The older ones have thinner walls, thinner doors. So a good example is you can't go and buy a door handle for a site-built home and put it on old old home. It won't fit. There'll be a big gap there. So it has to say mobile homes. I can go to two different Lowe's within 15 minutes of my house. One sells parts for mobile homes, like such as a door handle, and the other one doesn't. It just depends on what they have in that area, you know, their demand as well. So we do a lot of from the parts stores. We do a lot from Lowe's. You know, there's you can replace everything with the same stuff that's in a site built if you want to do a full rehab. In my opinion, I see most people go wrong on these older ones, and especially the ones inside the parks, is because they over rehab. And I'm not saying to give someone a property that is unsafe, but you don't always have to paint. If the person that it, you have to decide who your end renter is or your end buyer is, if they are willing to do some of the work, some people call it work for equity. Uh, the rent owner, there's all different terms that people use for. If they're willing to do some work, your, in, your target end buyer or renter, then build it for them. So an example for us is we never paint unless we have a special reason we have to. Because I want and like and relate to a blue collar worker. I can't legally discriminate and say, nope, you're not a blue collar worker. That's yeah. fair housing. But if I have an end product that happens to be what attracts a blue collar worker, then the people that want everything done for them is not going to want this property. And so we'll a lot of times put it on the market uh, safe. So we'll have kind of two levels of the rehab we're going to do. And if no one takes it within a few weeks, we can't find a, a good qualified person. We'll then go in and do the rest of the work. But in recent times, we haven't, we haven't had to make it pretty. We make it safe not pretty. Gotcha. I didn't realize that it was actually a mobile home uh, parts. You know, mm -hmm. like I thought it was just like, uh, and this is me not dealing with them that much because I don't want to, but yeah. <laughs> I believe 2004, and I don't know this exactly because we don't, we've never buy anything this new, but I think it's 2004, they have the exact same parts as in materials, quality materials as a site built home. Gotcha. Gotcha. So if I were to run numbers on this, basically, am, am I safe to 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 run it as a frame mo, mo, a site built home, or is it about the same price, or what would you say? You know, I have actually never done anything with a frame home. Those scare me because I don't understand them. <laughs> you know what? Mobile <laughs> homes scare me. So <laughs> exactly, and, and why do they scare us? Is because we don't know them. We don't we, know. We're them, scared yeah. of what we're we're not educated on, and that's why I would assume close to a frame uh, house. Uh, I would. 
you can't go by this exactly, but I would say your rehab would be a little less than a site built home, but your maintenance is probably going to be a little higher. Okay. That, that, that can walls, be a rule of thumb. The walls uh, are the, thinner. I guess that, materials. Well, you, you have, so in the eighties, they put in this uh, gray pex. Uh, I don't remember what they actually called it. So it's like the new stuff that it's the, the blue and red that runs straight there that people are putting in houses. It's similar to that, but it's gray. And they think they did it through most of the eighties. All of the joints suck and they're leaking at some point. So when I see that, that doesn't mean I'm going to replumb it that minute, but I know at some point I'm going to have to replumb this whole place. Right. A lot of the older ones, like I said, older than 78, I can almost promise you has aluminum wire. So the same thing, I don't know what year the site built homes went away from aluminum wiring, but it'd be the same thing. You have to do your math of, what does it cost you to rewire that? And that's going to be different in every market. Uh, if it's the proper height off the ground, it's just like a frame because they can get underneath it and run the wires up. It's not that hard to rewire that versus a site built home where they have to run, break the drywall and try to run down to the attic. So, so in other words, guys, if you have a home, mobile home anywhere in uh, what is it? A pool county just send it to send it to adrian <laughs> so like i i would have you know let, let me throw in one more i didn't talk about uh water sure. and these old ones the roof leaking oh yeah that is what scares me the most is on these older ones the floors are particle board and wow. when the roof leaks for a while they just start to melt and i've seen the walls literally doing this and I've got, I push on walls when I'm walking in it and I'd be careful because I have had some that I almost pushed the wall down. Wow. Water is a very, very bad thing for these older homes because they're almost all particle board and it's very cheap material. Uh, check in between the toilet and the shower. That's a, usually a pretty common spot. The floor is weak. Uh, we use a lot of window shakers down here. So basically a window AC unit because it doesn't get shake. <laughs> cold enough for needing heat all the time. So a lot of people get away with that. But what happens is people don't want to be ghetto. So they put the window unit in straight, flat, because they think it's ghetto when it's leaning down. Yeah. It's supposed to be leaning out. So because it can that means leak out. Exactly. The condensation goes out. Well, when they put it flat or even tilt it down, and now it runs down that wall. And there's okay. often time, so I go and check the wall and the window seal right there on the floor, that it'll be rotted away because they've been letting it run down. Gotcha. So th those are some good spots to look, you know, uh, water damages can be can be really bad. I um, I lived uh, some time in Ocala, Florida. Uh, mobile homes mm -hmm. are rampant up there. You may want to move to that market. Um, and uh, I'm going to Okay, so I'm gonna say this. I dated a lot, a lot of girls that in high school lived in these mobile homes, right? So I seen these floors, you know, kind of like this because of water damage. I see what you're talking mm -hmm. about. Um, you know, that I was in high school. I didn't care. You know, I was walking through the yeah. wobbly floor. You know, so but um, but yeah, I see what you're saying. It it's something that you definitely have to uh to be aware of. So. And it, it's just like anything else. It's repairable. You know, there's some point that it's not, but we've completely stripped the floors out of entire places. And it's just a steel frame, some walls and a roof. And we went through and put in a complete floor through the entire place. Because it's, it's a trailer. So it has a steel frame underneath it. And as long as that's not rusted out, you can rebuild your entire floor. Gotcha. Gotcha. All right, so we're getting to the end of this, guys. I appreciate uh, uh, Adrian. I'm trying to see if there's any other questions. I'm just going to give you a minute or so to post them if you have any questions. If not, uh, hold on one second. And for the people that are watching it later or you think of a question later, uh, probably the best way to get me is uh, Facebook Messenger. I think you're tagging my Yep, let me, let me share that right now. Hold on. Yeah, um, that's probably the best way to get straight to me. Um, this phone number, it's a great phone number if you want to uh, sell us something, if you have something in the, in the area. 
because honestly, it's going to go to Jacqueline or Jill and they're going to answer it. And they're going to try very hard to not let you get to me because <laughs> my phone would ring all the time. But, and I'm just being very honest. Um, they bring in the leads and, you know, pre-screen some people. But Facebook Messenger, I, I, I much rather text and, gotcha. and message like that. And I'll, I'll reply, I'll help out, you know, however I can. I just cool. try to just try to respect the time on messaging. That's just my preferred preferred way. Unless you got a deal, then then call in. We'll, we'll... <laughs> call in the number. <laughs> yeah, yep. that's you know, money talks. It makes us you know get on the phone a little faster. Hey Joe, uh, yeah. I got a deal, man. <laughs> <laughs> Pass me through the man. All right, I don't know if you can see this. Uh, this is your information. Can you see it, uh, Adrian? There. Yeah. Yeah, uh, if you can see it, then I think yeah. I see it. Okay, cool. So this is their information. This is his yeah. information. Uh, my wife buys, which. That's a cool name. I, I remember when you came up with it, you kind of told me why you came up with it. It's cool. It's still cool. Keep it. I love it. Anyway, so my Thank wife you. buys. This is his number. Same number as his shirt. And then this is uh, his personal. Uh, That's my personal Facebook. Facebook. And um, he, and you know, he <laughs> Adrian, can I throw something? Yeah. Go, go ahead. ahead. Sorry. No, I was going to say, Adrian, you, you'll be entertained by, by following Adrian for sure. Adrian is, dude. I love it. I love it. Everything you're into. I love it. It's cool. I try to, I try to make life fun. Yeah. Uh, I, I will say, shoot me a, a friend request or something, but if we don't have many common friends say, Hey, you know, I, I saw you on Jonathan's uh, uh, Facebook live, something like that, because you, everyone knows there's so many spammers out there now yeah. and I won't approve you every few months. I'll go through and actually look through uh, this person really in real estate and what are they doing? So if you shoot me a message with it, I will check that. And then I'll just accept you as a friend. I, I don't mind being friends with anyone as long as they're just not a solicitor or, you know, everyone's trying to cut down on that spam. I am too, man. You know, we have, that's actually, that brings me, that's a, that's a, that's a good, uh, uh, what is it called? Uh, that's a, a good segue. There you go. That's a good segue because, you know, we have real estate wholesale, it's wholesale real estate, the group, right? Which is, uh, mm -hmm where this is being broadcast and uh, we have over 2000 members now. And you know, that those spammers, man, it's just, just like, it's hard uh, to, to keep them out. Uh, yeah, man, it, it is difficult. And you know, it's, it, I, I'll give you, everyone a plug to help you out because I help run a Facebook group locally here is yeah. when you see the spammers there, report it to Jonathan. It makes his right. life a lot easier. Yeah, just report, report it, it and admins. it keeps, it keeps the the group clean. Yes. And then you get real genuine conversations and and real feedback when it when it's the spamming and you know they Jonathan and his team can't get to it fast enough. It clogs it up and then people don't want to ask real questions and it's yeah. impossible to screen everyone, but it, it really helps groups stay genuine. I don't know what it is, but um, you know, if you're selling uh, what is it, Forex? If you sell oh, that, yeah, I'm getting a lot of those right now, too. If you sell yeah, that, man. no no disrespect, but, you know, real estate wholesalers wholesaling real estate is for real estate wholesalers wholesaling real estate, okay? We're wholesaling. We don't want to get into Forex, even though, you know, it may be a great thing. You know, you may be excited yeah. about it. No disrespect, all right? So um, It's just not the right place. Not yeah, the man. right place. We want to <laughs> we want to wholesale, you know, and, you know, we want to wholesale some mobile homes now, now that Adrian uh, – Another Adrian, uh, yeah. uh, what's the word? Another Adrian Educated a little bit. There you go. And, and, and tag me on questions in there. Like I said, I love yeah. helping out. Yeah, I'm going to start I, doing that. So whenever you ask me a mobile home question, I'm going to be like, I don't know, Adrian, Adrian, take it over. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, I love helping and sharing what I, yeah. I learned. That's that's how I became successful is yeah. other people helped me. So, I, you know, it's, it's part of my job to pay it forward to other people. There you go. There you go. All right. We also have... Uh, OffMarketNinja.com is the name of my company. Uh, we have a free wholesaling calculator, which calculates um, calculates deal for you. So uh, nice. I'm going to put the link on the description of this video. I don't even know if you can do that with Facebook, but it will definitely be on YouTube. Uh, I'm going to put, put the link, and I'm also going to put the link to Adrian's uh, Facebook, his phone number, and the link to our group. So that's it. Uh, Adrian, anything else? Uh, I probably should have told you earlier, you can also put uh, our business page. Oh. And if you're looking to get into them, I do walkthrough videos. A lot of times I do it on my personal and share it. I share it back and forth. 
but it's the same thing. Facebook.com slash my wife buys mobile homes. Okay. You have to put the whole thing in there because anyway, Facebook made me do it. They have their own rules. <laughs> but I mean, gotcha. I, I, the reason I would say you could get value out of is following that page, not for my ego or anything, but it's more that I try to post a lot of different things about mobile homes. Sometimes it's just pure education because it is a, a paid business page to try to, for us to buy mobile homes from. Right. And we just like to educate sellers and, you know, we have stuff on there and different properties we walk through and. Tell yeah. them the name of the page. Is there, is it like a, like it's, an actual. It's, it's Facebook.com mm-hmm. slash my wife buys mobile homes. And I'll jump in and, and post it after uh, on, in the comments of the video too. All right, cool. Uh, I think, uh, Yvette, if you can take care of that, I post it on there. Uh, but that's it. That's all I got for you, man. You've been great. I appreciate you coming in. Uh, I know you got to go, uh, but yeah, uh, just uh, if you have any questions about mobile, home, uh, mobile homes, hit up my boy, Adrian. He is great. And uh, and Adam is a, is a Facebook friend. He is really entertaining. And uh, congratulations on the on the Bucks win uh, down there. Yes, sir. Which yes, is, sir. I saw your outfit, man. That was that was great. That was awesome. What were you wearing? A diaper? Was that a diaper or what was it? No, it was a, spe- a speedo body. Speedo. Shirt, my cape. Uh, I'm not sure if you saw the other video. I mean, I did the exact same thing 19 years ago when we won. Or oh, you did. However long it was. Yeah. So there's a, a fun stat is 100% of the time that I dress up in body paint and a speedo uh-huh. Uh-huh. for the Bucks, uh-huh. they win the Super Bowl. Oh, well, so. you have to do it then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's you. It's that was, that's what it was. I knew it was something. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm the good luck. You know, I'm the stat here. <laughs> All right, man. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. Hey, thank you for being on th- there. Thanks for having me, man. This is a lot of fun. Yeah, man. Thanks. All right. Later. Bye.